Okay, so I guess it's nine o'clock, so we might as well get started. Um, just want to say before we do get started that uh, we will have time about uh, two thirds of the way through, through through questions. So as we're talking, you know, think about what you'd like to ask, and we'll pass around the mic and you know do our best to answer it. Um, and so now at this point, I'll ask Matteo to and everybody to sort of introduce themselves. Matteo, if you want to start. Hi, I'm Matteo Collina. I am technical director at Nearfirm. And I'm a member of the Streams Working Group, and most involved in Streams, HTTP, HTTP2, all things streaming, really. So, hey. Um, hi, I'm Anna. Uh, I also work at Near Firm on Node.js. Um, kind of been all over the place, and currently working on Quick and HTTP3 support uh, in Node.js, together with James Snell, who I guess isn't in the room, but. Hi, I'm Manit Soli. I work at Postmates as a staff software engineer. Um, on Node, I primarily contribute to timers and HTTP2, as well as some um, kind of more obscure internal stuff. I'm Gabriel. Uh, I work at Intel, and I've been working mostly on uh, an API um, and uh, the C++ wrappers uh, for an API and the native add-ons in general, making them work with workers, that kind of thing. And I'm Michael Dawson, IBM's community lead for Node.js, and I work with uh, a number of the teams and projects, uh, sort of strategic initiatives across the project, including things like NAPI and others as well. Um, so let's start out. Matteo, you know, given what's gone on in the last few years, do you think Node is still relevant? Absolutely, Michael. It's uh, not JS. <laughs> I was hoping that was the answer, so. Uh, hopefully, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. You know, Node is done. Okay, yeah, yeah. it's boiled, it's cooked, yeah. whatever. No, no more Node. I don't know why you're all here, really. Um, so, Node is doing great. I think uh, Node.js is entering. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's a mature technology now, to some extent. And it's, it's fully grown up, as what, as what I would say. And uh, it's, uh, it's basically like all like all great technologies, is to some extent fading in a little bit in the background, where it's not making the headlines of big company use Node now or whatever. It's just it's just there, and uh, companies all over the world and developers all over the world are using it for building great things. And I'm I, I'm not seeing growth like slowly slowing or anything, but uh, at this point, it's uh, it's a technology available for everybody. Like if you consider. Uh, things like uh, you probably all of most of you will use Visual Studio Code to develop in whatever language, and this is built on Electron and Node, and uh, or uh, other folks might just use serverless, and there is some Node in there as well. So Node is basically just a technology that is you know available for developers to use, and you know everybody can. There are others, of course. It's not that there is a mantra of you know we should just build everything with Node. So it's it's just doing great. It's it's evolving and it's uh, it's definitely a different phase though for for, yeah, for Node.js. One of the things I really noticed is that we've had I don't know this is the fifth or sixth version of this conference, and you know as opposed to the first one where a lot of people were experimenting, now almost everybody I talked to is like, yeah, we're using Node and we're using it in production in some way. So it's it's really a big change on that. Yep. Yeah, I think the other part that's interesting is there's a whole community of developers now who are using it on the front end and, and for React and all that whole ecosystem that doesn't even know that everything they do is powered by Node. Um, all of the build tools, everything. And it's just kind of in the background, right? And I think that's that kind of speaks to the maturity part. Absolutely. I just wanted to, to add one quick thing. It's there is uh, one of the greatest thing that I that I had that, that happened to me this year was I went to uh, uh, design design system training so I was in the room full of designers most of the time just completely like completely out of my comfort zone so whatever and uh, I uh, one of the things that happened was okay in order to do the one of the exercises of during during this this day of training was well you need to use this software and in order to do that, you need to install Node.js. <laughs> and they were just like, OK, now we have all this room full of designers that have Node.js installed in their app. They don't even have, know what this is. But they just use this tool to uh, use Node to use some tool on top of it. And for them, it's basically just, just a runtime. 
just a dependency. So it, it has been a fantastic feeling, really. Like it's, you know, we have been, we are helping uh, other, a lot of folks innovating and creating new things that are disrupting other industries that are not even, you know, we're not even our start, starting targets, you see. Okay, so it sounds like, you know, we've seen a lot of, uh, on the business side, uh, node maturing. Anatoly, how do you think the code base is aging? Um, I think it depends, right? So it's it's interesting because there's a lot of a lot of parts in Node that they're moving really fast and are really progressing at a at a good pace and and moving forward. I mean, you look at stuff like workers, you look at stuff like modules, um, and that stuff is really kind of the qu the code quality is really amazing. But then. You go back to some of the stuff that requires backwards compatibility. If you think about streams and HTTP, um, there's you know there's ecosystem modules like Express out there that support all the way back to 0 0.10, I think maybe yeah yeah. So you have this tremendous range of versions that you have to support, um, and it creates a lot of difficulty in terms of maintaining. You know you you fix a bug or you think you're making something more consistent, and in the process you break everybody that you didn't know you were gonna break. Um, and we have tools that help, deal us, help us deal with that. Um, there is obviously Canary in the gold mine, and that helps us test things, but it's, it still makes it tricky, and you have to have a lot of kind of specialized knowledge to contribute to those modules and to keep them evolving, which I think makes it really tricky. So are there any things you think we should be doing differently in the project to help, you know, Help us manage the aging of the code base, or I don't know, Matteo. Any thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> we definitely need more. Oh, we always need more people involved, especially on those uh, on those areas that are not uh, most of the time are not. You know, uh, there is no sparkles like is in in this, those <laughs> in maintaining that 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 those that code. Like, you know, it's uh, uh, a friend of mine, uh, an old jazz collaborator, Matthias Booth says, uh, you know, every time we try to, like, uh, maintaining node streams is like playing guacamole. Every time you, you squash a bug, time more pops up. <laughs> and, uh, you know, pop. <laughs> and it's basically trying to, you know, keep them all down at the same time. And this is not, uh, but it's that's it, really. It's, uh, no, it's, it's hard because of backward compatibility needs. And we are slowly making things a little bit more coherent, every one release at a time, trying to break as, as little as possible in a tiny single step, and hopefully providing incremental improvements. So it's just it's a long process. And uh, we are trying to work with you know, uh, module authors and maintainers to you know, help them uh, evolve their module and proactively fix them. Because we can detect, with Canary, we can detect that, for example, we are broke express or some, something like that. So we can go ahead and say, look, we're going to break this. So I'm sending you a pull request right now. So it will pass. So it will pass when not, the new node, node version is, is, is coming out. So, and we've done this several times already. So uh, if you have, is there some op popular mo open source module that is not included in Canary in the Gold Mile, please reach out. If there is a module that we have broken for whatever reason, that we are not, it has not been patched when the new node release comes out, please contact us. Okay. Um, I think one other thing, speaking to the what, what could we do better, um, I think this has worked for some modules in Node is um, just kind of code documentation and, and documenting edge cases and, and why certain things are done the way they are. Um, I think in HTTP and streams that sometimes isn't quite <laughs> <laughs> isn't quite the case. Um, so I think in general, like if people are trying to contribute, I mean, if you're kind of browsing through that code and you kind of understand why something is the way it is, documenting that, adding a PR to just add comments um, is going to be helpful for future people who are trying to understand that same code, which is very confusing. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. So Anna, Matteo mentioned contributors, and one thing we've noticed, we've maybe seen a little bit of a slowdown in, in the growth of contributors. Do you think that's an issue? Um, no, no, it's not an issue. Uh, I, th like, I think that really just reflects what Matteo said earlier to, like, I think your first question. Um, and that is that Node just has become a lot more mature, um, and like I like I know our contribution rate and the rate at which we add new collaborators, I think it's like maybe 
I don't know, 70, 80% of what it was two years ago or so. So it slowed down a bit, but that's really just a sign that, yeah, node is mature and maybe there's fewer low hanging fruit, you know, hanging around. Um, and, and that it takes, because of that, it takes more commitment to contribute uh, to node on a regular basis. Like Anatoly said, like some areas where we actually need folks the most require a lot of um, time working your way into it, like HTTP, R streams, or TLS, or stuff like that. You know, uh, old code. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't th see it as an issue, and I think we're still healthily growing. Like, there's still, I don't know, like about a handful of people that you know are on the path to becoming collaborators. I would say so. It's not a slowdown, really. Yeah, I mean, I, when I look at and try and keep on top of the uh, the GitHub notifications, it's really hard to believe that there's any sort of slowdown because there's so yeah, much yeah. stuff going on yeah. and so much stuff coming in that I, I agree 100% that it's it's really just, you know, we're reaching a certain point in our maturity. And we, we need to continue to focus on making it as easy as possible for people to join, but it is going to yeah. get a little harder. And just with so much going on, it's, it's not necessarily an issue. Yep. Um, so now that we've talked a little bit about the node, the, the sort of node core ecosystem, what do you, Gabriel, what do you think, how is the, the overall ecosystem doing? So um, the, the other day, I think the, a person from NPM mentioned in their talk that there are, what, 58 billion downloads from NPM a month or so. It was 58 billion, wasn't it? Sorry? I thought it was 58 billion. 58 billion, yeah, with, with a yeah. B as in Bravo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so I, I Given that, I, I suspect that uh, the ecosystem isn't exactly stagnating. Um, and uh, given, given that I work mostly with, with native add-ons, I can tell you that uh, on the native add-on front, we're also making great progress to, to make it more like the JavaScript add-ons. So uh, in the last year, I think um, uh, Node add-on API alone, which is just a C++ inline wrapper library for, for an API, went up to like 300,000 downloads a week. So, uh, and that's not entirely reflective of all the native add-ons out there uh, because, you know, a lot of people, they ship pre-built binaries. And so, you know, they, the developer downloads once and then the binaries get downloaded who knows how many times. So we, we have rough figures. Um, uh, uh, the, the maintainer of, of, of Level Down uh, did a great job uh, compiling all the native add-ons recently and, and breaking them down by which ones are moved to an API and which ones are not that's, that's a great help for us. And, uh, and uh, in the new year, when, when, when Node 8 uh, goes, out, goes out of maintenance, uh, we have a lot more sort of, uh, we have like fairly big modules. Like I think Node SAS is sort of uh, poised to move to an API. Um, and they've just been waiting for Node 8 to sort of drop off the map. And uh, so that's going to add, I suspect, a few more downloads a week um, to, to our tally. Um, and so, so yeah, an API adoption is going along well. And uh, I've actually heard from Matteo that uh, in, in one case, I forget which module level you... Down. Yeah, level down. They, they, they actually had a performance boost by moving from, from NAND to an API. So that's great to hear. So I... I have no worries, I, I suspect, about uh, either the JavaScript ecosystem or the, the native one. So, Yeah, I know that uh, you know, because of all the value that that ecosystem is delivering, there does seem to be you know, some discussion about like, how do we get funding, how do we get support. So I think we have a few things that, like, that we're working on through that pack package maintenance uh, effort in terms of like, helping the ecosystem. But it still seems to be pretty healthy and you know, it's growing. And, and it's doing well. Um, so let's move on to uh, you know new features because we're all interested in what's going on in Node Core. So Anatoly, what's your favorite new feature? Uh, ES modules. I mean, I come from front end background and don't really do that anymore. But ES modules have been around forever in tools like Babel and TypeScript, and I think a lot of people are familiar with them in some way. But they're now flagged in Node. Um, they're a little different than you might have been used to from kind of the previous implementations. So I think it would be fun if people played around with them, um, gave their feedback. I know the modules team is always looking for feedback. Yeah, I think we really should have a big shout out to the team who's worked on that because it's been a sort of 
a really big area with lots of different ideas and so to, to bring that into something that we actually got in is, is I think a pretty good pretty good accomplishment. Woo! Woo yeah. <laughs> So Anna, what's your favorite uh, <laughs> new feature? I mean, I, like, I, I don't think it's actually new at this point anymore, but I, I mean, workers are still something that I'm excited about and proud of, to be honest. Like I put a lot of work into that, making that happen. And I mean, it's only been officially stable since like September or August, I think. Something like that. <clears throat> something like that, yeah. And I mean, like it has, like there haven't been many changes up until that point, so it's almost been stable, like de facto for a year or so. And people are starting to use it, and um, people are actually starting to use what we intend to, <laughs> for people to use it for. Like, like we you know when we started working on workers, we were kind of worried that people might use it to like basically do the same as cluster, like um, put I/O onto multiple threads and try to do multi-threading like the classical way that you know you did before Node. Um, but no, like people are actually using it for CPU intensive tasks that have to be moved off the main thread, which is exactly what they are there for. And there's NPM libraries evolving around the feature, and that's just really cool to see happening. Yeah, yeah that was definitely one of the ones I'm really excited about, and just to see all the different ways people are going to use it. And I think hopefully it gives Node some some other use cases that people are going to be able to use it for. So really important in that front. Uh, Gabriel, how about you? What's your favorite? Uh... I, I, I will surprise you greatly. It's NAPI. <laughs> 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 no, but uh, so so I mean, NAPI isn't a new feature, right? I mean, it's I think it's, it's around. It's been stable last year, right? Uh, this year, though, we've we, we've added some stuff to it that uh, that actually does a lot to to support the new workers. Uh, because uh, uh, something really strange has happened because of worker threads, right? So, so uh, native add-ons, NAPI or otherwise, before worker threads were basically singletons, right? The node process starts, sooner or later the application loads some native add-ons and then the application runs quote unquote forever and then the process quits, right? Uh, at, at forever it quits, right? Um, but uh, <laughs> the, the native add-ons, they had absolutely no motivation to, to, to clean up. Right, because you know the kernel is going to clean up the process anyway. So why clean up? Right, there's there's not that much reason. I mean, you know, if you if you if you have things like you know database handles going in and out, in and out, you might want to clean those up. But but there's a lot of like static module data that's just not necessary to clean up because you know it's like global static and call it a day. Right. So all that changes with with uh, with workers because now you essentially have node instances going on and off, on and off, on and off, you know, running what is potentially an entire application with who knows how many native add-ons, and then the thread quits. But the process is still there, so there's nobody cleaning up that memory, right? The, the, the kernel is still waiting for the process to quit, and that doesn't quit, right? So, so I, what, what, what became global singletons uh, had to become essentially self-contained and properly lifecycle managed objects, and that's, that's a huge shift, right? Because we're talking about like 30% of the of the of the ecosystem that has to now all of a sudden, whoa, Nele, now this thing's on this thing's static data. Now I, I all of a sudden got to move it because it has to be threat safe and 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 it has to be cleaned up. And oh, all my references, all my wrapped objects. What happens if they don't get garbage collected before the environment quits, right? And and so so a lot of the features for an API four and five, which we released since last year uh, are about that. So we added, uh, well, Anna added environment cleanup hooks first to Node, and then we exposed them over an API. Um, then, then we added um, something that's similar, but not exactly the same, which is the, which is the instance data, which makes it really easy for any native add-on to just say, you know, during init, you know, allocate this data, stick it there, and here's the thing with which to free it. And then when the environment quits, it calls the freeing thing. So. And, and at any point in the add-on, you can just say, give me that data, right? So you don't need to, like, like with, with, uh, with hooks, you need to sort of, yes, you have a pointer now, no more static data, yay, and you have a way to free it, but you still have to sort of thread it through, through all your async workers and thread safe functions and, and all your bindings and stuff like that. With, with instance data, you don't need to thread anything. You can just get it very cheaply from, from the environment. Um, and, and it's gonna be unique to your module. Right, to your module instance, in fact. So if you have three instances of the module, each one get a different one. 
So, so these are some of the features for an API. And then I mentioned threat safe function in passing. That's that's another one that that was that was really uh, in demand because people had their own native libraries out there that were doing threading and so forth, and they they tried to write bindings for Node.js to expose all of this to to people who write JavaScript. And and the first well. No, the second thing they encounter is, uh, you know, I can't call into the engine from another thread, right? And so, so how do I make that easy, right? And so basically, thread safe function sort of uh, bundles a bunch of utilities, um, threading utilities provided by LibUV together uh, to give you the, the, the abstraction of uh, just making a function call into JavaScript as if it were on the same thread, but now it's okay because it's thread safe, right? So you call into JavaScript, and, and you, you can even receive a response back. But of course, it's all asynchronous, because it has to be. So, so that's, that's another very cool feature that, that uh, I've, I found um, that people are using and uh, filing lots of bugs about, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so Matteo, what's your uh, favorite new thing on the block? Well, you probably know already, to some extent. It's not new. It's not something still not new still. But it's, uh, it's uh, sync iterators. I did a big talk yesterday about that, so I don't know. Maybe you watch that. If not, this is YouTube. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and uh, um, I think it's it solves so many problems that uh, people are facing with using streams and Node.js for a lot of cases. And you should probably know more about this new primitive that is available in the language. Consider that from January, all active LTS lines of Node.js will have async iterators. So essentially, we you can actually ship async iterators. You use async iterators on all supported lines. So there's no real reason for not to use them everywhere to some extent. So it's pretty cool. Um, another thing that uh, um, another thing that it has been happening in the last uh, in the last while is uh, we are making some progress on uh, um, the unhandled rejection problems. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with unhandled rejections, hopefully. Uh, it's uh, uh, essentially the, the core part of this. It's um, just to summarize, because it's a very long topic, very long discussion. Like we are, I'm talking about 100 plus <laughs> comments on GitHub issues every single time this thing has been open. So, or, you know. Hmm? Order of magnitude. Order of yeah. magnitude off. Yeah, yeah. it's like. Thousand comments, <laughs> yeah, thousand comments, like for every single GitHub issues. And um, the key part there is uh, it, what happens when your promise rejects and there is nobody listening for it, no, nobody attaching a catch handler, what should be the default behavior, how Node should behave, and so on and so forth. We have added some flex in Node to introduce a strict mode, which will actually make Node crash, which I personally think it's the right thing to do, and a lot of other people do, but not everybody. So, you know, long, long story short, says there is, uh, all of that has been making some progress. Um, I've uh, recently landed a PR that I've been working for six months. You know, when you land a PR working for six months, you're actually quite happy. And uh, that uh, um, basically allow you to, to capture the rejections that happen inside the Ventimeters and, you know, have them actually do the right thing. For example, destroy a stream or close an HTTP request, or so on and so forth. So it um, might be get a little bit safer to not crash on you know, 100 rejections by default, but you should really, so you should. And I just want to add in my two cents that uh, landing the full internationalization support by default was a good one, one of my favorites, where now people you know, across the world can, can work on own, their own languages a bit more easily. So at this point, we want to open it up to questions from the floor. Uh, it includes IC, full ICU, so it includes the full ICU data by default. So if you use the ICU APIs before, by default, you would only get English. And you would have to take extra steps to be able to get the data for those other languages. Uh, now it comes bundled in, and, and all the data for all the languages is there. So if you're converting currencies or, you know, it's not, you know, you know you've still got to internationalize your text. But the support for the things that vary between languages is there by default for the different languages. So there is, uh, so that there, is, there, is, there is no such thing as done in software. Okay, like 
it's, there's always bugs, always new feature. The JavaScript language itself, it's evolving. It's evolving rapidly. So there's new feature being added, new paradigms, and so on and so forth. I think one of the key uh, uh, one of the key topics for the next few years would be to uh, to some extent try to uh, reconcile Node.js with the largest uh, front end and web community. So there is a lot there is some quirks in making code that can run on both Node and the browser. So that for me that is that is a challenge, and there's where a lot of focus will go. Um, and uh, on top of that, there is new things that are happening in the ecosystem. So for example, there is uh, um, the quick, quick and HTTP3 is going to happen and it's happening already all over, the, all over the industry. So the big vendors are all implementing that. So that is kind of the, would be kind of the new thing uh, and, uh, uh, and so on. Um, Overall, Node.js is, is, is doing well to some extent. So it's, there's a ton of work. So if you want to get involved, there are 900 open issues. So, and 300 open pull requests. So, you know, it's, uh, uh, however, I think with the addition of, of Worker, probably we have tackled most of the you know, biggest challenges of, of, of bigger requirements for Node. There's also a lot of things that can be done, for example, to improve the performance of, on, uh, on serverless environments. So reducing cold start and other things that needs to be done inside the internals, which might not be, you know, uh, fancy. Like this is lo a lot of hard work to shelve off, I don't know, 50 milliseconds or, or something. But that is uh, on a cold start, but you know. We have shipped, we have done some of the work, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to add like, like, so one thing that we always have to do is keep up with the language. Like Matteo said, it's not just that, you know, the language is evolving and we ship new V8 versions and we get new features, but we also like, we try to keep like integrating them with Node.js. Um, for example, async iterator support in Scream, stuff like that, that's gonna keep happening. Um, like, like if there are some open questions, like for example, what exactly do we do with private properties when we're inspecting objects with console.log, right? Um, these things get tricky. Um, and so yeah, there's always a lot of work to do. Also quick, um, I mean, that's a huge thing. It's a huge addition to the code base too. Um, and it's cool to be working on that and it's cool to see that happen. And these things are also gonna keep happening in the future. So um, for coming from the hardware side, uh, what, what I'm seeing is that uh, we have nowadays, like in, in the whole industry, we have like a couple of very well-established algorithms, right? Like we have image processing, we have AI, we have uh, compression, encryption, hashing, these kinds of things. Um, and uh, the CPU is not always the only thing that they run on. Incre increasingly, there are all kinds of specialized hardware, you know, there's basically chips out there that do one thing and one thing well, right? I mean, GPU is generic in, in the sense that it can do a few things, not as many as a CPU, but that's just an example, right? There there are FPGAs out there, there are specific uh, uh, chips just for AI, right? And, and um, especially for, for these standard algorithms, Node has them all, right? We, like we have, we have OpenSSL, we have Zlib, you know, these things. So, you know, integrating integrating i mean why wouldn't you want like you know a compression that's five times as fast as what what zlib can do right now in node.js right um you know if, if there is hardware out there that can do it or or if there is a better implementation out there right um so basically what i'm seeing is that there's this heterogeneous sort of uh computing environment slowly kind of making its way through the different cloud service providers and so forth and uh, uh, the runtimes and, and uh, all the software that's running on them, and Node.js being a major one there, uh, could benefit from this, right? But it takes a lot of integration work, and, and, and some of, the, some of the, the ways in which these, these uh, capabilities can be accessed are fundamentally different from just, you know, you call the function and it, it does its thing really well, you know? So some, some of the things are asynchronous by default, so you no longer need to shove them off on a thread to, to make them asynchronous. But that's a completely different paradigm now. And so 
So integration is is not always is not always easy, and uh, and and uh, you know figuring out do can I do this? Do I have the hardware for it in this process? You know, if you wake up on a, on a machine that has it versus a machine that doesn't, you know, is it architecture specific? Is it platform specific? What is it, right? And you got to do all this at runtime without making too many if statements, which increase your startup performance, right? Mm -hmm. Or decrease your startup performance. So, so I, this is this is a little fuzzier than 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 specific features that that need to land and so forth. But I think it's a it's a trend, and uh, and uh, I, I'm personally very interested in in, in how this is going to play out and and how how we're gonna, you know, always make the best. Of the hardware that that we run on, you know, and and find the features that are available. It's like think about it. It's like feature detection, right? That it's not just in the browser anymore, and you're detecting, you know, not not browser features. You're actually detecting hardware features. So that's kind of a cool thing on the server side. Okay, so we're we're at time, but I might try and squeeze in just one more question since we only had one, and so we won't feel bad if you have to sneak out for your next talk, but we'll take one more. I think we had one. Hi guys, I'm Jimmy. Uh, Michael talked yesterday about the new maintenance process that you're putting into place, or the community is putting into place. And I'm curious, how's that changed the TSC? I mean, if I mean maybe with all those new chips, this isn't true. But if there's some kind of asymptotic drop off after a while and things stabilize, you have you know fewer feature requests, more people saying help, help. I thought I can't get up. That prioritizes the maintenance process, presumably. And I'm just wondering. I mean, do, do, will you always? Will there always be a TSC, and will always be different than maintenance people, or does it change over time, or you know? How do you deal with that maturity in terms of this process? So I'll start by answering that in that the, the, the I think the maintenance process he's, he's talking about is the work in the package maintenance group to try and. Not the mic. Oh, yeah, that's right. I don't have the mic. Sorry. The, 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 the maintenance process he's talking about is the work in the package maintenance group to try and figure out how we work with the, the, the overall community to make things better for maintainers. I, I personally see that as there's some good synergy with Node, but it's not. It's, it's, Kind of still its own its own thing. Like so, I don't think personally that's going to affect the TSC necessarily. It's something that I, I think it's good to have the input and um, sort of the attention of the TSC members to help make, move it forward. But I don't think there's going to be a direct impact in that front. I, other people can say. Yeah, the, the TSC is fairly focused on the you know node and the features that are related to that. I mean. Obviously, we think the, the, the rest of the ecosystem and those pieces are important. Um, but I, I don't think it needs to be a everything merges and is in one necessary, one area. It's, we have strategic initiatives, so it you know, could fit into something like that, where it's one of the areas we have a champion who pushes it forward. But we have lots of those different things. And as, and as everybody on the panel mentioned, there's lots going on and lots happening. So you know, I think we'll always have those different things. And and I think um, so so you know we we have we work very closely right with 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 all the working groups that we have in our organization and I'm fairly certain that I don't think there is even one where we don't have at least one TSC member there so so you know uh, between us we we basically try to keep abreast of all the stuff that's going on right and 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 it is it is of immediate impact to us. You know, so like I personally, even even if I don't participate in all the discussions and stuff, I, I read like most of the threads, right? So, so it'll it'll set off alarm bells, positive ones or negative ones, if if I see anything that 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 uh, that catches my eye, right? And I think that's true for all of us, right? So so you know you know the, these these working groups, they're they're not working in a vacuum, right? So it is all. As far as I can tell, a fairly cohesive project, and and it is in our best interest to 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 keep the ecosystem and the core uh, aligned as much as possible, especially now that we are such a mature project and 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 that there is like, you know, real money, <laughs> excuse me, riding on us, right? So, so you know, we it's in our best interest to do this. Okay, so thank you very much for coming we're, we're, and uh, being patient as we went over a few minutes and also for getting up so early and coming to the first talk. Um, thank you very much.